Hey, in this video we're going to basically rebroadcast a stream I did on Twitch last week, which is a photo editing stream using Capture One. So I'm Daniel Norton, photographer here in New York. I make videos like this one on Twitch mostly. On this channel I do a lot of tutorials, philosophy videos, and just general photography stuff. But if you're interested in, you know, Capture One and editing Capture One, follow me on Twitch. The link's, you know, are here. And uh, if you're interested in other photography stuff, follow me here. Subscribe. In any case, let's get to it. So, uh, hopefully I will not sneeze because my allergies are good. Also, I'm a little more contrasted today, I think, too. I switched to the Z50. So, am I crooked? No, it looks straight. Um, so, we have that going as well. So, anything pops up weird, let me know, guys. But otherwise, let's get to it after we just stream for 12 minutes doing nothing. <laughs> so, I um, did a shoot uh, last week, or whatever it was, um, with Erica, which is over here. So I only have my one dribble hooked up right now. I'm sorry, it's really loud. It's like moving a bunch of files around. Um, I don't know if you guys can hear that. It's like... But um, in my drobo, I've got... Actually, I'll show you the whole thing. So uh, I separated out here. Oh, hold on, I'm not showing my desktop. Man, when you start off rough, it just keeps going rough. Now we're here. Okay, here's my desktop. <laughs> Um, so we're in 2020. I go down to photo shoots. This is kind of how I organize everything. Of course, you can see them all by dates. So the latest things I do will be at the bottom. Uh, I just did a, a, some portraits for my friend Jacob, um, but I already edited those. Um, so uh, plus, I didn't ask him if I could Twitch stream it. So he probably wouldn't want. I mean, maybe he would. Who knows? Um, but we did this shoot here with Erica. Uh, let's see, on the 15th. And this is actually a, I got together with Erica because she was in town for a bit. You know, people are coming in and going, especially with all that's going on. Uh, you know, you got to go where the work is. So people are bouncing back and forth. Yeah, yeah. Dedicated computer, exactly. I just need to, uh, I just need to figure out what I need before I invest a whole bunch of money. Because I will not, of course I will invest a whole bunch of money because that's the nature of Daniel. Uh, so we did these three, these three looks. Um, for three different videos that are going to be uh, coming up uh, in Adorama. So we're going to edit them so that I have something to use for thumbnails <laughs> and also so Erica can have her pictures. And this first outfit shows that Erica knows me really well because she said, oh, I know you like this outfit. And yes, I do. I'm all about the jumpsuit. Um, let's see. Uh, all right, so we're in Capture One. I have not updated. Well, I guess Capture One Twenty One is coming out. I, I noticed, but I have not uh, any information on it yet. So I'm still in Capture One Twenty. In fact, I think I need to update it again. It gave me a warning earlier. Um, and you know, of course, this is how we shoot. We shoot tethered, and I've got all the images we shot. 104 images we shot between three different looks. And what we're going to do is we're going to select everything. And what we're, from here, I'm going to hit the number three, which is going to make them all three stars. So we're going to edit by removing the ones that we don't like or don't, you know, that aren't our favorites or whatever. Uh, and we'll go from there. And the way that we're going to do that is pretty simply to go up here to our search. Uh, little search bar. Eh, where would my search bar go? Oh, my search bar disappeared. I guess it's right there. Uh, my search, and then I go, I'm, I have a new microphone, and it's blocking my, ah, the troubles of being Daniel. Put that back. Uh, let's see. Uh, over here, I'm going to go on my search bar, and I'm going to switch to three stars or higher. So all the images will remain because they're all at least three stars, right? Um, if I click, see an image I don't like, I'm simply going to hit two, uh, which will then make it two stars. It will disappear from this search, which is all I really care about. It's all about what I can see currently. So... This video, excuse me, I'm going to be drinking a lot. I think too, my voices are not, not super good. Yeah, the yeah. At some point, I will come on and beg for everybody's help in uh, doing the computer. I, I have I started watching a video. Seth sent me this video about explaining all the different parts of computers, and it, it felt like it was too basic. But then at the same time, I was like, I better watch this. So I've been watching, you know. What is a motherboard? Um, anyways, and I definitely want to have RGB in it because I got to have my, my RGB, you know, got to go full on influencer with that. 
All right, so what I did here, right, this is kind of typical of me. If, if I'm going to do this, this shoot's actually about positioning the subject relative to the light, so within the light source. Um, so first I kind of did proof of concept with the first handful of frames. I shot with her in one spot and then in another spot and then in the third spot, and then I kind of like tweaked it a little bit. And then once I did that, I was like, okay, we'll get ready. And then we actually shot some because it looked good. And then we started the actual video, which I guess starts somewhere around... here. Well, I guess somewhere in there I started. There it probably is where I started. Well, I guess I didn't... Usually I shoot a bunch of blank frames before I start a video, but I guess I didn't do that that time. All right, so let's look at this. This is basically a side lit. It's not a terrible shot. I mean, not everybody can be uh, lit like this, but it, for Eric, it works. So normally it's a test shot. I might have just tossed it, but let's just take a peek at it. Um, there we go. It's sharp, right? She's lit. It's side lit. I'm not going to try to hide that. And in fact, if anything, I might amplify the fact that it's you know more dark. So let's just go to our general um, uh, adjustments here to the levels, which is what I would normally work with. And I'm going to grab the uh, my high level. And I know I just said I was going to make it more dark, but I, I want to make it more contrasty. And in order to do that, you have contrast is a is a is a range, right, between light to dark. So just making something darker will not make it more contrasty. It'll make it muddy, as as I like to, as I would normally say. So because I'm, I know I'm going to try to bring the darks down, I'm going to first bring the lights up so I have that contrast. And I'm mostly looking at the highlights here. I'll bring, I'll bring it up closer. I'm mostly looking at the highlights, like right here. I want to push it so it's like right near the edge of starting to lose detail. Because, I, again, I want to go for a contrasty shot. I mean, you could go really far up and you might start to lose it. So I'm just going to kind of adjust it to taste. Um, that's pretty good. Then I'm going to grab my mids and kind of uh, flatten out. A lot of times I might move my mids flat a bit if I was trying to make the, the image more flat. But again, I'm going for more contrast. So I'm actually going to leave it pretty much in the center there, where, where it slid it, I should say. I'm just going to grab my darks and slide it over and see if I can get a nice kind of dark shadow. Now, once we start adding this contrast, you can see that the, the saturation is going to crank. So um, probably went too far there. Uh, so we're definitely going to have to do something like that. Yeah, that was pretty good. I'm just going to grab my saturation and just dial it down a tiny bit. Not, not a huge amount. I typically like to look, look at the whole image, you know, and then jump into the face and then go back, you know, and make adjustments that way. Um, as opposed to always just being close, because you might see something weird. You might not notice something weird, I should say, when you're in close. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So now we've added a bit of contrast to make it, this side lid image just a little pop a little bit more. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. Greetings from Germany. Hey. Um, yeah, so there, I'll keep that one. Now I'm not going to save this. Normally I would uh, copy the the what I did to it, but I'm not going to because I know the next image is, is different. So uh, maybe I will. <clears throat> so I'm going to hit Shift, Command, and C. And that's going to copy all my, uh, all my adjustments. And I'm going to move down to my next image, um, which I will then Shift, Command, and V and see if it just looks good. Oh, see that? That looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to jump in here and make sure that I'm not, uh, oh, you know what? I've been getting a lot of phone calls. Let me just turn off my notifications on my computer here. There we go. Yeah, we don't want that. All right. Uh, it's that time of year. A lot of phone calls are coming in. They're raising money for stuff or whatever. Okay, so that looks pretty good. In fact, this one might even look a little bit more saturated than the other one. I'm going to grab that a tiny bit. And I'm also going to grab my, my mids and pull them to the darker side a little bit more on this one. Yeah, that's good. Nice and contrasty. <clears throat> this is not an ideal placement of the light. Again, I was just testing it. Uh, the The light's a little bit low on her for this particular angle of her face, and it's throwing the shadow up here, so it's not my favorite position for the light. But, you know, it's not terrible. This is bad, so I'm going to hit two next to that one, because uh, I knew that was going to be it. I wanted to do this more side-lit shot. That looks pretty good. Again, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just paste the settings I have just to see, you know? Um... Yeah, that's not terrible. Maybe we're going to go contrast it today. Erica is really good to light like this because she has this like really like cool shape to her nose that really catches that light from the back. Love that. So I like to give her that little from the back. Uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. Go down. Similar. Boom. That looks pretty. Mm. See now in this one with the face turned this way, it looks too contrasted to me. So I'm going to dial back the darks. Yeah, just let it flatten up a little bit in the shadows. I think she's addressing me more, so I kind of want to have... I'm just manipulating my mids there. 
I haven't really touched my highs because it looks pretty good. I don't want to flatten them for sure, see how flat that gets. Uh, but I don't want to go too far either because then it starts to see, you know, see where they were was good. Somewhere around there. I might be pushing the edge of this too if I come in and I start looking at my um, my numbers, you know, up here at the top. Uh, I am getting close to 255 everywhere, but that's nah, fine. Works for me. You know, just because you can uh, have detail doesn't mean you need to have detail in both your lights and your darks. It really kind of depends on uh, what you're looking to do. All right, so I like that one. So there you go. Those are the throwaway shots at the beginning, and I didn't even throw them away. <laughs> um, all right, this is kind of flat. This is very flat and kind of a little boring, but we'll uh, I'll give it that same whack. Eh, even that doesn't look bad. I feel like we're going to go a little more contrasted today. Oh, hold on. We got a spin. My my uh, my stop not streaming. Marginal. Oh, I think I had heck up there, but I think I'm back. Huh. There we go. All right, looks like I'm back. Yeah. I, I, you know, this light is very very uh, creamy and soft, so that little extra smack didn't really hurt it. I will say this though, now that I'm uh, like flatter with the light, I feel like she's a little bit too much the same tone. So I'm actually gonna grab my, oh, it's spinning again. What is going on with my internet here? All right, it's bouncing back and forth, guys. I think I have to. I'm gonna leave this up so within the streaming software, so I can watch it. Uh, so I'll just pop in one back and forth to get some uh, to check the chat once in a while. Um, so if I don't respond right away, but I did see. Is there equipment making noise? Yeah, that's my Drobo. It, it started doing some kind of a, a moving around of files just before we started, of course. So, and I can't turn it off because uh, I'm using it right now. That's where I, where the photos are coming from. So, yep, you can probably hear it crunching in the background. It's doing its dealio. Uh, I tried to move the mic closer to me so, you, so it wouldn't really be. Uh, but I can't really get rid of it, unfortunately. So if you hear that crunchy, that's what it is. All right, so anyways, here we're going to add a little bit more, I think, in, in the brights. So I'm going to drag my brights over a bit. And, you know, that's going to help. See how that's starting to bring the contrast up? It's not just brightening everything, but see how it's making it more. If you can feel the contrast coming up. But now that I've done that, I'm probably going to drag my mids back so I can keep that. I still want to keep that like darker vibe. Yeah. Now the only issue with this kind of thing is that when you are doing it, uh, you know, again, I'm up, like I said, I'm up close to her face, and I thought that looked really good. I'm I'm gonna start losing, especially this is like a like a uh, a dark purple. You know, I'm definitely losing detail in here. If you're doing something that's fashion, let's say, and you need that detail, uh, you know, you gotta be you gotta be wary of that. You could either spot uh, bring it back. Or just watch the way you're lighting it. But again, this is more of a portrait, not really a fashion shot, so I'm not overly worried about that. And I think that looks decent. Uh, I'm gonna this one I'm just gonna crop. I didn't move the camera because we were just doing a quick lighting test, but clearly there's way too much space around her. So let's crop in like that. And that's good. Alright, we're good. Let's go to the next one. Alright. Uh, again, I guess I moved the camera. I was like, let me move the camera. And here we go. We've got to... Uh, I feel like those... I can't copy, unfortunately. Well, I can. Okay, so if I want to use those settings I just did for that, but on this next one, but I had that that crop and I don't want to do it, what I'm going to do is select them both. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go... Um, image. No, I'm sorry. Adjustments. Uh, copy and apply adjustments. And it's going to drop. give me this drop-down menu. And here I can decide what I want to copy, and I'm not going to copy the crop. So I hit apply, and it does everything but the crop. And then before I start messing with it, I'm just going to go, because that looks pretty good, I'm going to go uh, shift, command C, so now I'm just copying the, all that other stuff, because this one I need to crop as well, because I got the light in it a little bit. It's always good when your test shots are good enough that you want to keep them, so then you end up having to <laughs> crop. That's, that's always a good thing. Yeah, there we go. And, all right, now, see, now when I apply it, I don't have the crop on there. Easy enough. Let's jump back over and make sure we're still streaming. Looks like we are. Oh. 
I am on Twitch now too. Joe, coming in, doing my thing. Your browser encountered an error while decoding the video. Oh boy. Back now. Okay. Refresh. I don't know. Yeah, we definitely had a bit of a loop going on at the beginning. All right, cool. So yeah, so this looks good. Uh, and notice too, by the way, guys, I'm trying to mix it up for the end of 2020 because I know you guys appreciate the chopping off the, the, the head. But now my new thing is I'm going to leave the top of the head in there. But I'm going to chop the elbows off. So all elbows are gone from now on in 2021. So we're, we're going to, you know, oh, well, I'm not in 2021 yet, so I can have some elbows. Um, I'm, I just pasted the same settings. Uh, there we go. That's a good elbow chop. Uh, here, she's looking way too far away from the light. I think I even, in the video, I probably say, I look really far away from the light. Yeah, it's functional. Also, it looks like she moved a bit because you can see the raw light hitting her arm. See that shadow there? You'll know when you watch the video that uh, there's actually a big silk here. Okay, we'll fix that. Yeah, sitting her there as well. Okay, here we go. All right, I think we adjusted the exposure in the video. Now it's got a brighter vibe to it. Uh, so if I if I paste the same settings, you see now it's all, now it's too bright, right? Because I really cranked it. So I'm gonna actually come in here. Actually, I'm gonna undo that and I'm gonna start from scratch. This is a new setup, right? I'm gonna grab the sliders as usual, my um, brights first. Start to adjust them until the highlights are starting to pop where I want them. Then I'm gonna grab my mids and do a little shuffle to see where I like that, probably around there. And then I'll grab my darks and bring them over so I don't look too flat. Yeah, there we go. Pop in close to the face to make sure it looks good. Nice and clean, whoa. And yeah, looking good, Erica. So shift, uh, shift command C to copy the, the settings. And I will then, and it's funny because if you look at this one, so here, well, what do we do first? I'll do it this way, right? So that I pasted the setting, it looks good, right? Let me undo that. You know, this is not bad. Like if you look at the one on the right, it's not bad, right? This is what you're usually gonna get when you have flat light out of the camera. Like it looks good, you know, this is pretty neat, pretty decent, right? But once you add that little extra pop of contrast, it just really starts to come together. Now you could do this with a picture profile, obviously in your camera, uh, if you're shooting JPEGs. Uh, Cause I do get that question sometimes people are like, you do it in camera. Well, I mean, I'm shooting raw, so I'm shooting it flat so I can I can pop it later. If you did find that you didn't wanna uh, have to deal with it in post like this, not that this is that big of a deal, um, what you would do is you would just make a picture profile on your camera. Like I'd probably bring my my high, my light from the way I shoot. I bring my lights up and my darks down, so I'd, I'd crunch it in a little bit because I you know I tend to shoot a little flatter. You know, in my general lighting. And you will see. I mean, if you watch enough of these, you're going to see that I do the same thing a lot. And the reason why I do the same thing a lot is because I shoot. Even though I'm shooting all different techniques and different lighting uh, uh, tools and stuff like that. I just generally like stuff the same. I mean, you know, with the same kind of ratios. It's just how I, my brain operates. Uh, okay. Yeah, I definitely like to drop off body parts. <laughs> I could be a butcher. Yes, yes, yes. I'm definitely that guy that buys the whole chicken because it's cheaper and then I cut it up instead of the person that buys the, the, the chicken breast because you're paying way too much when you buy that chicken breast. No elbows 2020. <laughs> okay. Funny. All right. So, yeah. So, here we are. You know, boom. There's Erica. That's kind of a weird one. I'll get rid of it. That's a good smile. I'm not sure I like this for some reason. to get rid of that. That's very 70s for some reason. I guess probably the jumpsuit. Yep. So yeah, we're just I'm just pasting the same. Okay, so here we, we decided to move something and, and I you know, as usual, when you're when you're working, right? Uh, and you move the model or you move the light or whatever, unless you know it's like a major change, sometimes it's worth, especially with a big soft light, just having them move and take a shot. I mean it's digital, it's not like it's you know the end of the world if you can't use it. So I had her I think move closer to the light, and you can see that it's brighter which I knew was going to happen, but I was like, maybe that'd be acceptable, but it actually is too bright, I think. And I, I yeah, because you can see that, you know, from far away, it doesn't look terrible, but when you're getting close, uh, it's just too much, 
You know, it's too blurry. I think, actually, I think it's a little blurry too. No, it's sharp. It's just got a flick. When you blow out so much, it starts to get this like blow this thing. I think it actually focused on her cheek. It focused. You have to bl always blame the equipment. <laughs> That's the rule of photography, and I went too far. All right. That's pretty good. Because, again, we wanted this kind of, kind of moody thing. We're going for this darker vibe. Um, so let's, again, if I if I put, if I I paste the same settings, Shift-Command-C, uh, V, rather. Huh. That's not terrible, but because the image itself is darker, uh, I can already see that I'm going to have to mess with the, the saturation, too. I'm just going to reset that, so Command-R. Um, and... Let's again. Let's take this one from scratch. I'm gonna grab the levels, and you know, and there's no certain, there's no magic number here. I'm just dragging it, and I'm watching, right? I'm just looking at, like, I'm looking at this part of her face right here, and like right here, because I know this is where it's gonna shine, right? These are like your T areas, the T area, which is like here, and then also the cheek is as closest to her. If you, if you were concerned, maybe the arm as well, but I know here because she has makeup on, makeup is reflective. That's probably gonna be brighter than everything else. So. I'm going to watch this area, and I'm watching that until it just starts, until my eye starts to feel like um, it's getting where I want it, exposure-wise. And I typically go a little bit brighter than, than I think it would be good. And the reason why I go a little bit brighter is because once I tweak my mids, it tends to drop that a little bit, too. So then again, I'm going to grab my mids. As you can see, I just grabbed the mids that dropped it down. And then I'm going to grab my darks, just to make sure I have enough dark there. I don't want to go like, oh, you know, you just want to give it a little bit. Yes, that's better. Now, now my saturation is not off the off the wall like the like it was. If you still felt like this was too saturated for the skin tone or whatever, which I don't, I think that's actually pretty perfect. Uh, you know, you could just drop the saturation like a tiny, tiny bit, but I think it's good. Nah, it's good where it was. All right, there we go. That's look number two. And then we'll you know set up number two. So Shift Command C, and they should. I'm just gonna again paste it. Okay, this one I got a little bit of light in the shot because, you know, I got excited. Boop. Boop. But make sure you cut off the elbow, right? Cutting off the elbow is important. Moving down to the next one. And yeah, we're just going to work our way through these. Hmm, interesting. See, as she turns her face, this is a good example of uh, reflectance, right? So this is the same exposure, really. Um, but when she's turning her face away from the light, what's happening is here the light's coming in at an angle, right, and bouncing towards the camera, so it actually looks brighter. This is why backlight stuff looks brighter, right? Here it's the same light, same exposure, but, you know, I'm in manual. Um, but she turned her face flat to us, so not as much light is able to kind of reflect. The same way a reflector board works, um, you know, so it's flatter. So indeed, because I can see that she's going to turn her face back in the next one, so I'm not going to, I'm going to, instead of, uh, even though I'm going to do this one, um, I'm going to paste the settings, I'm going to adjust it, I'm not going to recopy them, I'm going to just do this one as an individual one. And I'm just going to bring my brights up to add that back, so I get the same consistency. Because even though she has turned, I want the images to feel consistent, right? Uh, hmm. All right, so I think here now the, the saturation is getting a bit much, so I'll drop it down a couple, there we go. And that way, that one and that one now look like they have a, a closer feel, you know, than they did before. And I'm pasting the original settings back on this one. Her hand's getting a little bright down there, but I'm not that worried about it. <clears throat> Let's just jump back to Twitch to make sure. Missing anything here? Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. Uh, all right, again, pasting the same settings. I think this one's going to end up just being that. Uh, again, I'm just going to crop. Uh, you know, if these all seem reasonable, I'm doing the crops now. If you were doing, uh, you know, 500 pictures uh, and you weren't sure if you're going to keep them, then you might wait to do the crops because that, that does slow things down a little bit. Um, oh, yeah, here we go. That's a classic Erica pose. Uh, it's a little bit darker, uh, again, because of the way her face is turned. It's not darker, it feels darker. So again, I'm just gonna pull my brights up and move my mids over. So we get that nice feel there. I 
Alright, there you go. And then I'm just going to grab my bloop, cropper. I think it looks like the next few are actually like this. So I'm actually going to drag this cropper in. And down. And I will, now I'm going to copy this again. So Shift, Command, C. Go to the next one. If you normally I leave my my thing my mouse on the uh, <clears throat> on the hand the hand tool up here. But when I'm doing this, I leave it on the crop tool. That way, when I go to the next image, well, of course now there's no more like that. But when you go to the next image, the crop tool is already open, so you can make a minor tweak like I just did there. All right, so I don't need that anymore. So I'll go back. Again, this shot is me in the video showing, you know, that she's the, the position of the light, so we're not going to keep that one. Uh, this one even seems... Uh, you know, mm, all right. Uh, I'm torn. I, I think when I shot this one, I probably was like, no, but I kind of, uh, you know, I, I do like a shadowy shot. All right. Let's come in and see if we can we can see what this looks like with some adjustments. It doesn't take that long to do, and then if we like it, we have it. And if not, then it's easy enough just to not use it. So, again, I'm just making the same kind of adjustments I always make. But, but looking for that highlight, right? I'm always looking to get the highlight where my eye wants it. And, and in a heavily backlit shot like this with a lot of shadow, I want it to be almost expo overexposed. Nah, you know what? I don't hate that. All right. So I'm going to copy those settings, and we'll paste them. Again, watching uh, to make sure I'm not going to blow out too much here, but that I'm very bright. I want that brightness. Uh, I might even actually grab my mids and give myself a little bit more... Just flatten it. Nah, no. Nope. Take that back. I'm not going to do that. That looks good. Uh, oh, I get that. I know sometimes people ask me about that. There's a spot on the wall there. Someday it will be repainted. <laughs> you know, if that bothered you, of course, it's easy enough to come over here and grab the... Let's take the healing brush, and we will just simply heal it away. You know, like that. Boop. And now the thing is, if I was I was on a tripod, but I had it loose, so I can't do this. But if you were locked down on a tripod, you could copy this with that setting, and it would copy the heel onto the next uh, on the next one. But I'm not going to do that because I'm pretty sure that I probably moved the yeah, I definitely moved the framing. Well, let's just I'll just show you what it'll do. So we'll copy everything, and let's go back down, and we'll paste it. See, it's not in the same spot, so that's the problem. So you can't do that. Yeah, we definitely don't want to do that. That's another reason to like lock down when you're on a tripod, um, if you can. All right, so I'm not going to worry too much about this. I mean, if you again, if you're concerned, it's easy enough to to do that, and boom, it's gone. You know, this is the beauty of digital photography and editing, and, and you know, capture one like this. It's fast. Not that I have to sell you guys on digital photography. I'm sure everybody's shooting digitally, but uh, it's one of the things you couldn't really do. fundraising for painting no 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 it's just that with the guy paul never tells the guy that paints to paint the wall he just like tells him to paint the floor and you can't tell somebody to paint the floor and expect them to paint the wall you know what i'm saying i don't i don't blame the painter am i using a softbox or a beauty dish oh come on if you can't tell the difference between a softbox and a beauty dish you should watch my next video about softboxes. <laughs> no, it's it's actually a, a silk. Um, it's not either. Neither. Uh, we mentioned before uh, for screen calibration. Oh man, this is actually a very good uh, question, and I have this. They sent it to me. Here, let me get it. So, so Data Color sent me the Spider X, which I'm going to try, and I will make a video about it. I told him I'd make a video and tell him my results. I used to use basically this back in the day. Um, to be honest, <laughs> most of the stuff that I do now, the, the having the exact color, if it's important, I will just shoot a color chart. 
uh, and and you know for catalogs and stuff, they they end up doing the color correction in post production. I don't I don't do it, so I don't worry overly about it. But that being said, um, I do have a color profile on my monitor at home, which is why you always see me doing this here when I'm shooting live. Uh, I try to get it as close as possible, but I never calibrate my laptop monitor. Maybe I'll do it with this thing, but I, I never have. Uh, it's um, It definitely does not match, and this monitor I'm using is definitely better. This is the Thunderbolt Apple monitor. Um, it definitely have a way better color. So, um, yeah, I, the, the main reason why I don't worry about the color correcting on my laptop, though, has nothing to do with the screen of it. It has more to do with the fact that if I'm in a big, bright studio, it's not always easy to get that set up. And if I'm doing a catalog, I should say this is like for portraits and stuff. If I'm doing a catalog where color is super important and, and the, 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 we shoot the color chart, we rent, you know, we, we rent big monitors and those are all cal color calibrated, of course. And we, you know, we use the spider or whatever they give the, the uh, X-ray had their little doodad to whatever they called that. That was fine. I mean, um, so yes, uh, what I would do with color, color uh, correction is if I'm shooting a catalog or something that is uh, color sensitive, I would actually do it right before the shoot. But, like I said, I still shoot a color chart because I'm not the one color correcting. So even if my monitor is perfect, if the person uh, that gets it on the other end doesn't know the colors right, they might start tweaking it. So you, you want to make sure that, uh, that that it ties in. That Muppet t-shirt, you see you... Where can you get that? Actually, there is actually a... If you wait long enough here, there's one of these little things will pop up on the... It's from Teespring. Teespring... Uh, yeah, I'll read it to you. Teespring slash stores slash Daniel dash Norton. But if you wait long enough, this little automatic robot will, will, will send you to there. And you can get the Muppet t-shirt. I would appreciate it, actually. All funds go to me. Uh, do you want us to go fundraise? Okay, I already read that. Problem of communication. Yeah, exactly. Oh, you wore the puppet face mask? <laughs> yeah, they're so cool. I know. Well, you know what it is? They make them in, like, batches. So, like, you, you know. Uh, the only way that the you'll get the face mask faster or T-shirts or any of that stuff from Teespring is if you order a bunch of them. Like, if, if the, it takes so many to be ordered and then it ships. Or they eventually send it. I've had the same problem. Yeah, so, right. What you basically have to do is set... So, all right. So, I'll talk about that for a second. Uh, why not? So, if you're doing, like, a catalog... What you generally do is you're going to get V-flats, you know, and you're going to build this little, like, room, if you will, around the digital tech. Um, and it's going to block off as much as possible the ambient light from the space. So usually you, you put, I mean, especially in my studio where it's so bright, but even in a darkened studio, you basically build them a little house out of V-flats, which is like one side open, of course. And um, then you you do the spider or whatever inside that space right before you shoot that's generally what you want to do and then you try to keep that space controlled because right it, it, you have to then again if color is important you have to trust your your uh, your cards and your numbers your, your rgb numbers you can't just go off your eye if you're doing portraits and it's really just about how you feel about it then you just need to make sure that you're using something that's consistent so that it always looks the same uh when you're doing it you know and this monitor, like I say, the Thunderbolt monitor is really good. And I am going to do this Data Spider video. I have to. I see. I haven't even opened the box yet. Um, actually, maybe I'll do it before we go live. We're going to be live Thursday uh, with Adorama. So if you guys like to watch those, I will be back live. You'll probably see that surface the link for it at some point uh, in the next few days. I have to send it to uh, to Seth. He was trying to convince me to do something like a monster or something, but I don't think I'm going to. That's not my thing. That's his thing. So I will do a not monster. Anyways, speaking of not monsters, uh, we have Erica here. Right, screen calibration is about getting the monitor to display the right colors exactly. So, right, okay. All right, let me let me clarify. Right, so if you are looking at a monitor that is not calibrated, right, and you are looking at an image and you're like, oh, that looks really red. And then you start making adjustments to the image so that it looks correct on that monitor and that monitor is not correct, then that's where the problems come in. 
Um, that's really why you know you need to uh, if if you're if you're eyeballing things like like ninety nine percent of the time on portraits, I just want people to look good. I don't care if the color is exactly right. You know the the exact color doesn't really matter for fashion or product or makeup, especially that step is super important. So what you want is you want the client, right? You're on this job, this fashion job. You calibrate your monitor so that when the client looks at the monitor, they don't look at this jumpsuit and go, that's not the right color purple and try to get you to be adjusting it. You want it to look right, right on the monitor, it, right for them, you know, correct. You know, even though it's still gonna be dealt with in post, if that made more sense. That's probably a better explanation. Right, right. Were you talking about correcting with the ambient? Right, exactly. This is my point. That's exactly what I just said. So either you didn't understand it or you wrote that before I said it, but you calibrate the monitor in the space while you're shooting. That's how you do it. And then I would calibrate this monitor here because this is where I edit. Right. You don't, if I calibrate this monitor right now and then I bring it to my studio and use it, it may not be correct for, but my, my eye won't see it correctly, I guess is the yeah, maybe, maybe a video on color correction is necessary because <laughs> it is kind of an interesting subject. I feel like people put a lot of weight on it that don't need to worry about it. I say that right before I do a color spreader thing. But I, I mean, I think if you're just doing portraits, as long as it looks right to you and to the subject and is consistent, I think that's really your main um, your main goal there. You know, when you're when you're dealing with commercial projects, it's a whole other world, you know, then you have to really worry about things being ac accurate because, yeah, you can correct the color, of course, uh, you know, and, and tweak little bits of color and stuff in Photoshop, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, you want to still try to shoot it as closely as possible so it looks right because oftentimes your edit, your color editor wasn't there. And that's really why you have things like color charts and stuff like that. It's like not only was the editor not there, they've probably never seen the product, right? The product is, you know, some dress or something. And the, you know, the, they don't bring the dresses to the retouchers. I mean, dress if it's a fashion thing, of course. Ah, uh, yes, I like that. This one I'm not loving. Uh, uh, I got a funny hand going on there. She's showing the pocket, but I, eh, no, I like it. I was unsure. Nice little hair throw. Got the elbow cut off for 2021. Here, let me, uh, let me, uh, now you guys got me, uh, retouching out that spot on the wall, even though I like the spot on the wall, <laughs> usually. That's good enough. Okay. I didn't take it out of every picture because, you know, I'm lazy. All right, so we apply that. That looks good. Nice. Cruising along. Mm, I feel like your face is turned too far to the side. Oh, that's better. Oh, that's funny. I don't know, I'm going to turn the light up or something. Nope, nope, nope. Right now I'm looking at, I mean, I have enough good shots that I'm basically just looking at the light pattern on her face to make sure that it looks the way I want it to look. So I'm, I'm when I'm looking at these images, I'm not overly concerned with like the exact pose unless it gets really awkward. What I am concerned with is how the light falls on her face. Like you see the light on her face here, which is, you know, it's fine, but see how much nicer it is there. So that really creates these angles of light. So this is not bad. Actually, that's bad. that's superior. There we go. There we go. And nice little cross arm shot. Hmm. I'm going to give this one a little bit more juice. And I'm going to do that here. I'm not going to raise my highlights because if I raise my highlights, then I'm going to get too much contrast on our arms. What I want is to give a little bit more in here. So that's going to be my mids. And it is going to flatten stuff a bit, but I feel like it's okay. I'm, I'm okay with that. In fact, I might even grab my darks just to... Nah, I'll leave the darks with there. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, you could also do... Actually, let me put it back where it was. I'm not sure. You could also do probably shadow recovery. It would also help here. 
Yeah, that's also not a bad way to do it. I mean, there's lots of different ways to do things, right? Yeah, all right, I'll do Shadow Recovery for this one. Why not? Let's be different. Yeah, and there she is. Nice and sharp. Good skin tone. And there we go. Boop. All right, now we got another dress. Spot on the wall t-shirt. <laughs> Right, for the color, right, exactly, the color checker is, is what you want. Yeah, I'm not going to, I'm going to stop talking about that because you keep saying the same thing over and over again, uh, Mark. So I have no idea if like you just aren't following me or if you think you know something that you, that I don't, but yes, the screen needs to be calibrated where you're using it. That can be a t-shirt. All right. All right. So second look or second setup. This one, man, I forget what this was about. This was about... <laughs> Oh my God, I'm gonna have to go back and watch the video. Oh, right. Aha. This was about beauty dishes. Somebody should ask me about beauty dish. I think this was the beauty dish one. No, this is the beauty dish one. Huh. Guys, I don't know what this is about. It's, it's a video. Clearly she's darker in one and brighter in the other. But uh, I do not know why. So we will just look at it as pictures. If I can remember what this video is about, I will tell you. I see there's a softbox here. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, I know what this is about. This is about softness. <laughs> Yeah, I think the reason why the, the issue with them looking different on a phone, and this is actually, I won't name any names, but there's plenty of photographers who are, who are well-known photographers that have told me they have this problem, and this one thing fixes it. So see if this fixes it for you. When you export, export an sRGB. All photographers are always like, no, Adobe RGB is the better. The problem is, is that if, if the most people using the stuff is using it, viewing it, using software that changes it to sRGB, you want your program to change it, not somebody else's program or somebody else's screen to change it for you from a JPEG that you sent them. So if you are having uh, issues about that, that's what I would do. Uh, you need to go shopping with Erica. Yeah, you do. She does have uh, some of the best clothes. Hey, Vanessa. Yeah, but Erica's the best. And not only that, she always has, like, way more than you need. So I'm always like, ah. Anyways, this is about softness. And we start with a softbox. So this is whatever. This is the same picture that everybody's taken for forever. This is the, the classic softbox picture. Um, it doesn't really need anything, but let's, let's just go in and mess with it because, you know, I like to. Let's grab our lights a little bit and slide it. Oh yeah, see, oh yeah, oh yeah. Right there. A little bit of mid-tone shuffle. Right there. And always a little with the darks. There we go. That looks pretty darn good. Okay. All right, so we'll copy that. And that's the classic Erica pose. She turns, she looks up. She looks down, she gets, ooh, and she smiles, because I'm making fun of her. And then she's like, you're not funny, Daniel. And then she comes back into it. I'm just pasting the same settings on every single one. Yeah, I mean, this is, okay, now, <laughs> that's the softbox. Now we switch to a, a silk, right? To, to show the difference, right? The difference in size and spread between softbox and silk. This is like nighttime Erica, daytime Erica. Like she shows up at the wedding reception or the wedding in the morning and then by the end of the reception, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> huh. 
what are you editing? And nothing. Because you're do it perfect in camera. <laughs> oh, man. Actually, Capture One uh, 21 is coming out, uh, Vanessa. So, a whole new thing. All right. So, this is very clean. <sighs> yeah, it's like Erica in college. Erica in high school. All right, so here we're going to just... I mean, again, I'm just going to grab... I'm just going to see. I'll grab the lights. And uh, I'll give it a little bit. That's good. A little mid-tone shuffle. And grab the darks. Yep, there we go. Yeah, I'll say that is good. We'll call that good. All right. So that's this is a silk. Actually, it's the same thing I was using in the first setup, but it's further away from her and angled differently. So you know, it's not like a silk. Actually, all these first shots are with a silk in the in the jumpsuit. So, all right. Now she's happy, and I'm just gonna paste the same settings unless I find one I don't like. Cut off the elbow. That's good. Make sure no 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 arms. I might even try to do some elbows and tops of head cut off at some point. Yep. Oh, all right. Now, subtle change, but change nonetheless. Actually, where I notice it the most is actually with the color. Yep. Now I'm bouncing the light. And, and so this is a direct shot through a silk. And then this is bounced through the silk. You see how the shadow just like breaks up a little bit more. But also the color is different, right? Because a light hitting, a, anything that you touch with your light is going to change the color of it, right? So because I'm bouncing it first, it's picking up not only um, the, the the color of the bounce card, because even though the bounce card is white, it's, you know, it's not, it's not neutral necessarily. And then in addition to that, it's also picking up light from the floor and from the ceiling because it's all bouncing around. You can probably even see in her eyes. Yeah, you can even see the brightness underneath. So she's getting some floor bounce. Um, so yeah, so it, it shifted the color a bit. So if I did these same two shots together and I wanted them to match color-wise, I would need to basically, no matter what I did with color coloring my screen, it would not do anything. It's the light's a different color. I'd have to I'd have to gel my light basically, or um, I could tweak it here. Uh, it actually, I'll tweak it a little bit. I mean, I don't really care if they match, but let's tweak. I'll get it a little bit warmer. I don't go too far. Huh. This actually would be a lot easier to do with um, if I had shot a color card in both situations. I'm just eyeballing it, which again, we just had the conversation about. I'm just going to add a tiny bit of magenta. Yeah, that's pretty close. It's not exactly. It's more orange than I would like it to be. Um, I think I'd actually have to really go in and like tweak the actual colors to get it exactly right, but I'm not going to do that. Um, but it's definitely much closer. Like if we look, I mean, of course, it's a different light. The light's different, but it's pretty close. I mean, you look at the things like her eyes would be something that's pretty consistent. You know, you can see they're pretty close in color now. So what I ended up having to do was here was I just raised my white balance, my, my color temperature a bit. Um, and I gave it a tiny, tiny bit of red. Because a lot of times if you just raise your, your white balance and you don't give it a little magenta, I shouldn't say red, then what happens is it just looks yellow, which, you know, doesn't look natural because typically at the end of the day when you're getting the warmer light, it's not just yellow. It's got like reds in it and, and you know, stuff like that. That's pretty good. I wouldn't, you know. It's not going to look exactly the same. I mean, look at even the dress, the difference of the dress between the, the more directional uh, soft light and the bounce light, like all the reflection in it. So again, if you are doing fashion, this kind of stuff can be super important, you know, how you handle this. In any case, let's, uh, oh, no, that sounds right. Shift, Command, C, to copy those, and we will work our way down. Boom. Boom. Boom, she's smiling. She's smiling with big teeth, she's laughing. Oh, that's interesting. That might have been Daniel shooting too fast, so I got a little dark. So I'm actually gonna come in here, give myself a little bit of a boost. 
So I'm just adjusting my levels. There we go. There we go. And I'm just, oh, there we go. That's all I shot. It was too easy. So I was like, that's we're done. Cool, cool, cool. Lightroom. Ah, yes. I haven't. I went in Lightroom the other day, of, of, a couple weeks ago, when I was trying to edit an old picture, and it, it's so fun. And you, what you get used to, like, you're, my, I couldn't remember how I did stuff. I was like, I think you could. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, definitely try out shooting. I mean, shooting tethered will change how you shoot. You know, I definitely recommend uh, trying it. I mean, I pre although it's it's actually really funny. I mean, I was surprised. Um, I went out, oh, man, when was it? It wasn't yesterday. It was the day before? It was Thursday. I went and made some pictures uh, on location uh, of, a, of a friend of mine, uh, you know, and he's uh, he may, he's going to run for political office, but he lives like kind of in a country area, so he wanted shots like in location. So we went out and, uh, <laughs> by the way, I lugged all his equipment and I ended up shooting with, an on with the flash on the camera. Because he wanted it to look super natural, and it just looked more natural when you could balance it. That might be a video right there. But anyways, that, that's not the point I was going to make. The point is, um, <laughs> because I had a lot of stuff going on and my brain just wasn't working, I literally forgot my laptop. Like, I had everything in my bag except for my laptop, because I always throw that in the morning. And I got in the car, and I was driving. I was like half an hour away, and I was like, I left my laptop at home. And I was like, hmm... All right, I'm going to shoot without being tethered. That was probably the first time I've shot not tethered in, God, probably a couple of years. I mean, I bring my laptop like out in the woods. I bring it everywhere. I mean, I never just shoot at the back of the screen. And I got to say, it was fine. I mean, it wasn't ideal, especially with COVID. I was like, I shot a bunch. Then I like took out a wipe and cleaned the camera off. I like handed it to him. It was pretty funny, but uh, yeah. What I should have done was given him uh, a pick bridge or whatever it's called. Right, just faces only. <laughs> like that Phil Collins, Phil Collins picture. Just the face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Vanessa, do some Twitch streams. Twitch streams. You can tether to phones and tablets too. Oh, uh, Not really. I mean, yes and no. I mean, to really tell what I would consider tethering. You really can't. Like, even, like, pick bridge or whatever, like, you can do it with Nikon. People can see the pictures. It's not really tethering. Tethering is tethering. You know, you got to be able to do all of this that I'm doing for me to really consider it tethering. That's one reason why I'm not 100% in love with... Well, I haven't tried it now since the latest versions, but 100% in love with the way that Lightroom handled it. It didn't really feel like it was being... It was tethered. It felt like it was copying the images as I shot, which is not the same as being tethered, in my my opinion. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, Vanessa's been all over uh, TikTok, so that's why she hasn't been on Twitch. Or streaming on Twitch. I'll do, I'll do, I don't know if you're still there, but I'll do a Vanessa. Uh, oh, I have to say it because I can't have any type, but you want to know how to drink coffee? And they're pretty awesome. So watch those. Okay, so here we go. This one is about, somebody asked before about a beauty dish. This is a beauty dish. There are many like it. This one is mine. Um, so, probably not the number one, because I don't even want to tell you what the number one comment I get, but the number one, one of the number one things that happen every time I use a beauty dish, I always get a ton of DMs, and they always, because you know what happens, they go, oh, I really love that. And then they go and they look at the beauty dish and it's $400 and they go, isn't this other cheap blah, 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 this, can I do it? This video, I'm going to show you how to do something similar. This is actually a beauty dish versus an umbrella. So are they exactly the same? Can you get exactly the same look? No, especially when you get in really close. But for this style of portrait, I think we got pretty close. So this is the beauty dish, of course. Uh, it looks pretty darn good. Uh, I will do my normal tweaky tweak. I may not draw. So now the, the thing is, my beauty dish that I normally use is silver, so we can see that she's getting this nice highlight here that I like that I'm normally tweaking to get. 
So because that's already there, like on here and on your lips, I'm going to need to be careful here because if I if I give too much, I'm going to blow out. So I'm going to give just a smidge. That that might be too much. Might, but see, once you drop your, your neutrals, right? That's why I always go a little bit further than I would than I would uh, normally go. Then I bring my mids back. And we'll do a tiny bit of darks, and yeah, that looks pretty good. White balance, I think, looks good. Um, at five thousand, it's a little cool on the cool side, but I'm I'm getting used to it. Seth turned me on to the five thousand. Uh, well, I couldn't. I didn't want to copy him exactly, so I'm doing four thousand nine hundred ninety nine. So it's not exactly the same. Why is the beauty so expensive? That is a good question. Yes, this is the, the dented one, yeah. Um, I mean, if I had to, 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 to tell you why they're so expensive, it's probably because the sheer number of them that they sell is so much lower than other things, you know. Um, if you and you know, in the, the machining to make something like a beauty dish is very specific, whereas a, like a softbox is basically fabric sewn together, you know, even though it's specially made or whatever. I mean, it's it's the same thing as making almost anything else. In fact, the original soft boxes were made based on desi designs for, for tents. The guys from, from Shamira made the first soft boxes based on like pop-up tents. That's literally what the idea came from. The the soft boxes as we know it, not the original soft boxes, which are big heart heavy things you couldn't carry around. Anyways, um, so but what a beauty dish is, you know, it's like w once you make that mold and you're only selling so many, I mean, things like that are expensive, man. Um, okay. And here's the umbrella, right? So let's tweak this one as well. It's funny how in the in the middle video there, the one that I showed you with the soft the softness, I didn't do test shots first. Because <laughs> remember I said at the very beginning, if you were at the beginning, I, I usually test it first to make sure it's actually going to make. You know, sometimes things don't they. You, you can know things as a photographer, and you can do things that are very successful, but they don't always translate into a video. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So I was like, let me just make sure that this is going to make sense. So there's a beauty dish, and there's the umbrella, right? I mean, they're pretty darn close. Are they exactly the same? No, of course not. Actually, the umbrella, again, has that like slightly different uh, color as well. Here I might actually warm up a smidge. Anytime you put something through diffusion, it almost always makes it uh, cooler. Or warmer, depending on the diffusion. It shifts the color for sure. Um, yeah, that's not bad, right? So, beauty dish, umbrella, right? We look at it. You know, it's similar. The beauty dish is definitely punchier. You can see the contrast. I mean, it's a silver beauty dish as well, of course. But, you know, for all it does purposes, they're pretty close. Um, and the umbrella was like 25 bucks. I mean, you can get cheaper umbrellas too, of course. That's actually a pretty cheap umbrella. That's the total umbrella. All right. Oh, oh, okay. I went back to the beauty dish clearly because I can see that. No, I didn't. What? Oh, yeah, that is beauty dish. I was going to say, I can see that the color shifted back. So let me undo that. All right. Okay. So this is the beauty dish. So I'm going to, I'm going to go up to this one, which is the beauty dish. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, uh -oh. oh phew, my computer started spinning. Um, and I'm going to copy the settings from there. So I can, yeah, there we go. Uh, are uh, the pop-up beauty dishes any good? Uh, oh, you can definitely see the difference. You can see the difference, and I can see the difference. But I wonder, you know, in in, in and this is what I talk about in the video. So, you know, you can feel free to to watch the whole video and see what, what, if you think what I what I say is true. Um, yeah, the pop-up. Well, I'll say this about that. I, I don't have a problem with pop-up beauty dishes, although the, the best one, in my opinion, is the one, the very first one that was ever made, which is by Shamira. It's much more shallow than most of them, and it's much rounder. Uh, but even that is not the same as a beauty dish. Is it good? Yeah, it creates a nice look. Is it the same? No, it's not. Is it better to have that and get a cool look with it than to have nothing because you didn't want to carry a reader dish? Absolutely. I'm just going to grab my exposure on this one. It feels like it's, yeah, just a smidge. Um, I think that you need to take everything. There's no, there's no like, this is the same as that, but one's cheaper. Like, or this is the same as that, but one's portable. The same is just not the same. I mean, it, it, I've never seen something that worked out to be exactly the same. You know, there's always a compromise. 
But the reality is, is that if you took this picture of Erica and then a week later Erica came back and you photographed her like that, she probably would not notice much of a difference. I mean, except for the color, of course, there. But I will fix that in a second. Because the reality is that there is a difference. And, and a lot of times it's subtle. And we, as photographers, will really see the difference and will gravitate towards the equipment that we like. But the reality is that if I didn't, if I couldn't fly with the beauty dish because I was going someplace, you know, this is, would probably be my, my choice because this looks very much like a beauty dish and it's really easy to, to, to set up. I mean, it probably looks more like a white beauty dish, but I did not have a white beauty dish to, to, to use. Actually, Seth has one and it was in the studio, but I was just too lazy to get it. Um... Hey there. All right, so at this point, I'm just pasting again. Again, I'm tweaking out the color because that umbrella seemed to have dropped the color temperature a bit. Uh, or raised it, I should say. And... Oh, that's it. All right, so I didn't shoot many there because that was easy, right? But, you know, again, umbrella. Find a similar pose. You know, beauty dish. There is 100% a difference, right? And the more you look at it, the more you'll see the difference. But just on a quick glance, they're pretty similar. Uh, when we get in close, though, we can really start to see how the highlight pattern is slightly different, right? This is punchier for sure, right? We can come down and we can look at the the, the shadow. You know, the shadows on, in, coming into her cheeks in here are a bit more more dark. Basically, what you're getting with the beauty dish is a little more contrast. And also fall off. Because, like, look at her you know, her arms are slightly darker here than they are here. Slightly. It's not a huge difference. The shadow pattern under her chin, you know, is about, is about, is a, uh, you know, a little bit, I mean, it's not a very fair to do like that, but it's a little bit brighter here, a little bit, but again, not a whole lot. So when you want alternatives to items that you don't have, it pays to just look to see what you do have that's got a similar quality and see if you can get away with it, you know? If, it, if it's good and good, I should say good enough, that's not what it was good, you know, if it'll work for what you're doing. All right, so we got the, we got that. So this was one, one. so basically we got our, our, our videos, right? So you'll see this come on in Adorama eventually. We've got the, um, you know, the position of lights video, which is this, this, and that right again we're all with the same light source and then we've got the uh soft softer we'll call this at the end softest vibe right and then we've got our um beauty dish versus softbox right and that's, you know, that's basically a bunch of different looks with similar, you know, a lot of it's the same equipment, actually. I'd used, I used, uh, I think, yeah, I used one light for all of this. It's just a B1X, you know. Uh, one light, you know, just filling the studio with light. I didn't use any kind of uh, daylight or anything. Um, yeah, I mean, that's it, right? Super simple. So we've got this. I think these are pretty good. Like, I don't think I need to go any deeper into the edit. So what I'm going to do here, if I did want to, though, what I would do, I'll just mention this for people who maybe haven't seen this part before. Normally now the next step would be, if I, if I was unsure, especially if it was for a client, I would then select everything again, and I would hit four stars. And then I'd come up here and I'd go search four stars or higher. And then I would start going through them, you know, now going, oh, you know, now that I've looked at everything, maybe I'm not like in love with that one. So I hit three there. And I hit three, not two, because I want to go back and get the threes later if I want, you know? Like, maybe I'm not in love with this one, so I hit a three on that one, you know? Yeah. yeah even though I like that her elbow is cut off, you know, but I know that she likes different things than I do, so... And again, how much you delete or, or hold back or don't give to the client, however you want to say it, it really comes down to who the client is, you know? If it's somebody that you work with a lot and you kind of know what they like, and you uh, are okay with giving them a bunch of stuff because they might need it for whatever, then, you know, because I get that question a lot, like how many pictures do you give somebody? It really kind of depends, you know? 
If they're somebody who would have no idea of how to deal with the images and they're just like, oh my God, I just want a picture, then I would give them way fewer pictures. I would edit it really far down because I don't want them to be confused, right? Uh, of course, I would tell them I was going to do that. Hard beauty dish versus a soft beauty dish. What does that even mean? The beauty dish, if you're using a beauty dish, well, okay, there are different size beauty dishes, but if you're using a classic beauty dish that's 22 inches, they're hard, they're both the same. Like, a, you mean, if you're saying silver versus white? I think I actually did a silver versus white live, but I could do it again. I mean, the difference is really in your, in your, uh, it's in diffusion. It's not the hardness of it, really. It's the diffusion. So, uh, a white beauty dish is going to be um, more diffuse, right? Kind of closer to what the umbrella looks like. And the white, the hard silver beauty dish is going to be is going to be punchier in your highlights, so you're going to be more contrasty. Because remember, contrast, because is two things. It doesn't just have to do with your shadows; it has to do with your highlights. It's the range, right? So, uh, so a hard light will give you really abrupt, quick, uh, really abrupt lines of shadow, but that doesn't make it contrasty per se. What makes it contrasty is fall off. But let's say you have a lot of shadow, so it's contrasty, right? Then, and they're dark, then you use a lot of highlight, you'll get a lot of contrast. But let's say that you want a very shadowy image, but you don't want a lot your highlights to blow out because you want to really push that exposure, then you might want to go with the white beauty dish because that's going to be more gentle. I mean, I, generally, I use a beauty dish for beauty, which means the person has good skin and it's makeup and I want contrast. So I almost never use a white beauty dish. But if you do like a lot of portraiture, like, and people want a fashion-y look uh, or a beauty look, but they're really not uh, the the type of person that really would suit well to that kind of really punchy uh, uh, contrast and the highlights, uh, then I would say uh, a white beauty dish is probably a good option. But, you know, really, honestly, I only ever use white beauty dishes, like, so rarely. I used to use them for product photography a bunch, actually. Um, when I wanted something that was smaller and controllable. But now I have a lot of small soft boxes, so I don't really, um, really do that. Oh, hard versus... Po oh, that makes sense. Uh, I, um, I could... Yeah, Profoto will hate me if I do that. Profoto's OCF beauty dish pop-up thing is ugh, terrible. No, it's not terrible. I shouldn't say it. I'm not supposed to say anything's terrible. Everybody gets so mad when I say it. I just don't like it. I don't think it's like... To me, it's like this weird compromise because it's not... First of all, they make a two-foot octa. So the beauty dish is basically almost the exact same thing, except it's a little bit more shallow. So I just, I, I would get the two-foot octa and then buy a hard beauty dish. Or like I said, get the Shamira one, which if, if Shamira, if you're watching Shamira and you want to send me that, that I will definitely do, because that's a beautiful dish. When that first came out, because of course I was a skeptic because nobody had done it. They were the very first ones to do it. And I was like, you know, and then, then I tried it and I was like, oh, this is pretty nice, actually. It's not a beauty dish, but it's, of course, they didn't like when I said that, but it's not a beauty dish, but, you know, it's cool. You know, it definitely has a good look to it. I think it's just the shape of it. Like, if you look at a lot of them, they don't have that proper, like, shape. Uh, they need, it needs that, like, flat and then punch. Like, a beauty dish is like, you know, a beauty dish is not, right? A beauty dish is, if you've ever seen a beauty dish, it's basically flat in the back, you know? It's also like when they make beauty dishes for, for, for small strobes, and it's like, yeah, you bounce the light off the centerpiece, and then it bounces. That's not how a beauty dish works. <laughs> the deflector is not there as, as to bounce light back in and make I mean, it does do that, but it's really there to, to prevent uh, a hot spot. Would you, the, the proper beauty dish, you need a lot of spread. You, know, you need a lot of spread inside. So, you know, the best, best use of a beauty dish is to, is to put a, like a glass dome on the front, if you, if you have a flat light like I do. But the promoter does a pretty good job because they have 120 degrees, which isn't 180, which is what you want, but it's pretty good. Uh, you know, it's, it's not. Um, yeah, beauty dishes are tricky, tricky little beast. But uh, yeah, I'll see if I can get one. I mean, they're expensive. I'm not, not going to buy one just for you. But uh, if somebody wants to loan me one, I'll, I'll maybe I'll reach out to Shamir. We'll see what they're doing out there in Colorado. Nice people out there, really. Um, of course, I, I, I've, I've gravitated a lot more towards using frames lately. So um, back to my frame and fabric pattern. I like either really big lights or I like really small lights. I very, I mean, I use a beauty dish a lot in the live demos because I know people like beauty dishes. So 
But in my actual like personal work, I almost never bust out a beauty dish. It's it's such a it's such a specialized piece of equipment. I just don't see the point uh, unless I'm doing beauty, of course. And then I oftentimes use umbrellas. Anyways, <laughs> that was a big circular motion. Uh, I did this last time. My computer like tried to die on me because you know for some reason OBS does not like the, my my laptop. It eats it eats the power. Um, so I'm not going to actually export it now, but I will show you how I would do it, and then we will wrap here. All right, so I've selected everything again. Uh, you know, th there's whatever, many, 89 images. I'm going to come over here to this last little notch, and this is uh, all of my uh, process recipes. This one is called Models Dropbox. I've talked about this before. I say this every time, and I swear eventually I will do it. I'll make one of these just where I show you this, how to do this, and I'll save it. Um, oh, man, I just re realized that I, I don't think, yeah. I wasn't recording this. This is, my, this is not going to end up on YouTube. If you guys don't watch the ones on YouTube, you only watch these, then you're going to get something special this week because I didn't record. Uh, I guess I could download it. Anyways, Models Dropbox. Um, if you look over here, it basically gives them a JPEG, 2,000 pixels, um, and it's going to put it in a full oh, sRGB, which I just talked about, right? And it's going to put it in a... Um, a folder in my Dropbox, is what's called my Dropbox, with the name of the session. In this case, it's called Onset Erica, so I'll know it's Erica's Pictures. Um, by the way, I mean, I said, you know, if you're going to deliver pictures to people, you should do an sRGB. Um, this is true unless they're doing something specific that where they need it delivered some other way. You know, try to deliver in the way that they want it, even so far as asking them. Um, if you, for instance... I don't know. I'm going to try to find something. Like, here's my Thunderbolt display, right? Um, I'm trying to find LG. Like, let's say you told me, oh, man, I have this LG monitor here, whatever, uh, or, or TV. I could actually export it so it would look good on your TV. Let's say you were going to display it in a restaurant, right? If you're going to display something somewhere on monitors, and that's what the images are going to be used for, then what you can do is you can be like, well, what are the monitors? And you can actually export the thing in the proper color space for that monitor, if it exists. Uh, and that's really where you use all that stuff. Otherwise, I would say shoot, you know, 99% of the time, you're just going to want to shoot in Adobe, Adobe RGB and export it in sRGB because that's how most people are going to look at it on phones and web browsers and stuff like that. That's really just the best, best practice. Uh, and if you do that, you will rarely find times where you see your image posted somewhere and it doesn't look right unless they put a filter on it. Ah, okay, so in any case, you'd hit process, they would all go there. I'm not going to do that now while I'm live, like I said, because it... Exactly, that's RGB for online. And that's where most people are going to use the images. Yeah, so if you're if you're that guy or you people talk to you and they're in, then they're like, man, you know, I give them all my pictures and they ruin them when they put them on Facebook. And, yeah, because you're probably giving them either with your monitor profile uh, embedded, right? or you're giving them with Adobe RGB embedded. Like, switch it to sRGB. You do it, because you have Photoshop, you have Capture One, you have Lightroom. These programs are much more powerful than what some random person is gonna change it with. Or just lay in the web browser, try to interpret it in Adobe RGB and change it itself. Anyways, enough preaching about color. And I will do this color thingy. Uh, maybe I'll, hmm, I don't know if I could do that. Let me see how what the process is, because maybe I'll do it as a live stream on Twitch. I will actually calibrate my monitor live. I have no idea how that would work, but I feel like that's something we should do. In any case, guys, I will see you later.